five, four, three, two, one. Control. Dun, 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 dun. Control. Yeah, man, Janet Jackson is in control. Apparently, Janet Jackson made everybody mad because she questioned Chameleon Kamala's race. And now all the uh, race baiters are trying to make her apologize. They mad at her, y'all. They mad at her. So let's see exactly what got Janet in a little bit of a pickle. What's going on, America? Welcome to Kevin's Corner, where I try to make some sense out of nonsense. Before we get into this video, I need y'all to do me a favor. Hit that like button, share my videos. Please make sure you subscribe. Make sure your notification buttons are turned on to all. Subscribe to my alternative channel, just in case YouTube give me the slip or something. You'll know how to find me. Don't forget to check me out with all the podcasts and follow me on Rumble in the Junko. All the links are listed below. If you want to donate to my channel, feel free. Those links are below as well. Now, with no further ado, Welcome to my party, we're just getting started. Y'all gotta get in here and check this out. I love you, Janet Jackson, but I'm gonna need for you to do a little bit of research instead of talking about what you heard in interviews. Um, in a recent sit-down interview, legendary singer Janet Jackson did with The Guardian. She speaks on hearing that Kamala Harris is not black. She was quoted saying she's not black. That's what I heard. She's Indian. Her father is YT. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard this story by now because it's been everywhere, but with a simple Google search, Janet Jackson could have pulled up a photo of Kamala Harris's father, and this would have ended this entire situation. Well, I'm gonna need you to pull up a Google search to find some bass in your voice. Come on, you need some bass in your voice. Come on, yeah, no bass in his voice. Come on, yeah, that's a Kamala man for you, y'all. What? Here's another one. Respectfully, the black community loves you, but um, free. At least she wants to be black. Your brother did not. I didn't want to go to the grave, but I had to go to the grave. Your brother did not. At least she wants to be black. Your brother did. He needs some bass. How low can you go? That brother ain't got no bass in his voice. He's straight treble. But let's continue. So I'm in Chicago and it occurs to me I need to teach a quick civics for celebrities course. So here are five things to know for today's lesson. Number one, Kamala Harris is black. She has a black Jamaican father. She grew up in Oakland, California. She attended Howard University, a historically black college. And most importantly, she says that she's black. Oh my God. Janet Jackson, not you. Not you. Not you. <laughs> fatigue! Fatigue! Je suis quand même fatiguée, mes amis. Janet Jackson is in the latest uh, in an article today, released by The Guardian, where she calls Kamala Harris's daddy. Why? Girl! Kamala Harris's daddy is a blood clot Jamaican from Portmore, Jamaica. She's trying to destroy her legacy. Janet Jackson recently sparked some controversy by claiming that Harris is not black. She said that the Democratic 2024 presidential nominee has a white father. And when asked her thoughts about the United States potentially having its first female black president, she said, well, she's not black. I heard that she's Indian. When her brother passed away, he was a complete full blown white lady. And we still loved and adored him. What does this have to do with anything? Why is it so hard to understand the facts that she is a biracial woman? First of all, her father was not white. He was a black Jamaican economics professor. And her mother was of Indian descent. Janet should have sat this one out. Now, Miss Jackson. I was getting ready to get real nasty on your ass, but instead I decided to delete and retract the tweet because you know what? I was coming from a place of anger, not understanding because I do understand that you just lost your brother and you're possibly still grieving. But I'm just let you know right now, you are too grown to be going off of what the internet or what you done heard. You need to start doing research. And for you not to understand or know who Vice President Kamala Harris is or not know anything about her background is very telling. You are about to be 60 years old, sis, and you're telling me you do not know who is running for the highest office in the land. But as far as Kamala Harris' blackness go, I want you to look at your biracial children and you tell me if they're black. Did you know that two things can exist at the same time? You can be black and brown simultaneously? Really? I mean, my question is, is black a race or is it a color? That's what I'm wondering, because that man said that you could be black and brown at the same time. That's, uh, you know, kind of weird because, see, this shirt's black, but my skin is brown, but my race is black. So you could be at that black and brown at the same time. Uh huh. Uh, well, that's like me saying you could have bass and trouble at the same time. Nah, man, you either going to have some bass or you're going to be on the industrials like that. But now all of these folks right here are mad at Janet 
because she said what Kamala has been saying, that she's Indian. She just repeated that. Like, well, I mean, that's, I thought she was Indian. But now everybody mad. Now everybody want to go ahead and attack Janet Jackson because Janet's not jumping on the bandwagon and saying that Kamala show enough as a soul sister that should every time she come out to the podium, they should be playing the black congos. She should be coming out with a dashiki. I'm surprised she isn't. As much as she gets out there and pander, she probably is going to come out with a bone in her nose, uh -huh, all the disc and stuff in the lips and the ears and stuff, full-blown kit they cough, all of that mess, because that's what Democrats do. But these fools are mad at Janet for asking the question. Now, everybody want to blame somebody else or blame you for living in a bubble, but baby, the only person I can blame is you. I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Well, well, now isn't that all, all those same people that was mad at Janet right there went out and voted for that man, I guarantee you. The guy that questioned all of their blackness <laughs> based on whether you vote for me or not. You don't vote for me, you ain't black. Okay, Joe, uh, we get it. Uh, we got the message. We're going down to vote for you right now. Now, here's the crazy part about this. The reason this is uh, uh, even an issue is because Democrats major in identity politics. They're the ones that want to wear uh, race on their sleeve so they can come out and say, look at us, we got the first black, we got the first gay, we got the first whatever. Um, if they didn't bring these things up, it wouldn't even be a topic. But they want to be able to get out there and boast, number one, by saying, look at us, we're diverse and we're progressive and we got the first black so-and-so on. Number two, they use it to divide us. It's identity politics. Therefore, if you don't support our black or a gay or a trans person, then you're racist, you're sexist, you're transphobe, you're whatever we label you as, okay? So they put that out there, but then when you question it or call them out on it, then they get mad. And they send out idiots like these people talking about uh, she's black. Now, I've been hearing that she's black, and my question is, is black a race or is it a color? Now, the reason I say that, it's because there are Puerto Ricans, there are Cubans, there are Dominicans that look straight black. I was out salsa dancing when I first moved back here to Youngstown up in Cleveland and I'm sitting next to a whole table of what I thought was black folks. That's right. And I was wondering why they weren't connected with me, no eye contact. There wasn't no, hey, what's up brother? No head, nothing. At least you can get one of these. Nothing. I got nothing. So I'm sitting there like, what kind of black folk are these? So I kind of leaned in a little bit. Uh, they was up there talking something that I didn't know. And I said, what the? Don't, they look black. But I would never call them black. Because in America, we have just adopted black as a race of people who normally was brought here their ancestors was brought here. We all have a long history of being here and we're black because what are we, African? Nope, if we go to Africa, they're not gonna call us African. They're gonna call us black. They might call us American, but they ain't gonna call us African. Just like if a Jamaican dude came up to me, I'm not gonna be like, he's black. His skin complexion might resemble mine, but his nationality is not black, he's Jamaican. Just like I wouldn't call those Dominicans that were sitting next to me black. If somebody said, uh, where are you from? What, what race are you? I, he's Dominican or he's Hispanic, something like that. But you don't say he's black because they would immediately associate that with black Americans. Her father is Jamaican, okay? Now he might have a darker skin tone, but we wouldn't say, oh, he's black. We would say he's Jamaican. Her mom has a darker complexion. She's a woman of color, she's brown, but nobody would call her black. They would call her Indian. So Kamala is trying to rep the traditional American definition of what black is and trying to substitute that with the fact that her father is brown skinned it, very light though, but brown skinned it, and yet he's from Jamaica. But that, that that's still same thing as the being black. Nope, all of my friends from other countries that look like they're black, uh, I never call them black. I just say, oh yeah, man, he's, uh, he's you know, Mexican or he's Dominican or he's whatever, or she's Puerto Rican. I say that, I don't say they're black because they will uh, correct you immediately. I'm Puerto Rican, yeah, that, that's what they would do. But now all of a sudden though, you can't do that anymore. So let's go ahead and see how the media is reacting to Janet because Janet 
decided not to bend the knee, y'all. I, I don't understand why people keep talking about this. I mean, it's a settled matter, is it not? But it's it not is a, settled, but it's, not, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's still not, out there. It's not Donald Trump's fault either. And so I have to push back on that framing because there are corners of my barbershop mm -hmm. every single day. Well, it's being said, yeah. They, they yes. question whether or not she's black, yes. or I don't trust her because yes. she's not and black. And so let me take yes. a yes. look. Yes. 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 Donald yes. Trump says something very ignorant about her I mean, I hear what you're saying. But the, Trump's elevation of this no, conversation. No, this is, no, this is important. But, 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 we, but we, we, we were having this conversation about her ethnicity and what she is, wrongfully so, in the corners of black America for a long period of time. Now, we have to disabuse that notion and extinguish it. And yes, Trump does go to the darkest corners of whatever conversation may be and elevate it. And he was ignorant for doing so. And as former president of the United States, you should not do that. And I'm glad you pushed back on it. But I can't say that this is this conversation or Janet Jackson's conversation is because of Donald Trump, because I'm having these conversations, particularly with black men every day about yeah. whether or not Kamala Harris is Here's a fair black. point. My friend called me yesterday and she or a couple of days ago and she was with this is before this was even an issue before Janet Jackson was even an issue. She's with her 18 year old nephew who's a freshman in college. And he was like, I just read that she's not black. She's not black, is she? And I was like, get off the phone. What are you saying? <laughs> Wait, but there's it, a what, difference it's though, a normal Gary. conversation that, that you're having. It is. It is. A, it you're is a conversation that. that unfortunately we have had and we've had for a long time as a people. Um, whenever we get into this conversation of trying to define who's black, it always leads to an ignorant place. So now we see that this ain't just something that came out of Donald Trump's head. Black folks actually are talking about this, but the media tries to make it seem like this is only an issue because Donald Trump brought it up, which Donald Trump didn't even bring it up. He was asked a question from a black journalist who was race baiting and was talking about that because she's a black woman. And she opened up the door for that criticism. Now everybody's mad. Now Trump's at fault. Uh huh. All he did was shine light on it, and a whole bunch of black people was like, "Yeah, I was thinking that too." Uh huh. So this guy right here has an interesting take on it. The very thing that I tell y'all all the time just happened with Janet Jackson. Let's catch it and talk about it while it's fresh. So Janet Jackson was asked in an interview about Kamala Harris and her presidential ambitions, and she basically said, "From what I hear, she's not even black," which is literally her right, her prerogative to say what she believes or what she heard. No offense intended. So guess what happens? They send one of the high V's, one of the Democrat shields out of the hive to attack her, which is something that I say it happens every time a black person is critical in some type of way about any person that's a Democrat, a Democratic policy plan or vision. Guess who it was? It wasn't Roland Martin this time. They sent out D.L. Hughley and we know what the D.L. stands for. And this is what he had to say. Janet Jackson's interview sounded like a Trump rally. FYI, it's a little ironic to question whether someone is black while you're breathing through the nose of a white woman. I can't believe that he just disrespected Janet like that. He goes further and says, Kamala Harris looks the way she does because she has a mom from India and a dad from Jamaica. Janet Jackson looks the way she does because she has a plastic surgeon. Now, remember these cats, these Democratic liberal men are always talking about women's rights and respecting women. But look how D.L. Hughley blatantly disrespects Janet Jackson. He goes on further to say, all I know is Kamala looks like she did when she was in Oakland. But Janet don't look like she did when she was Penny. What the hell was in that iron? Mm -hmm. For her to just be drifting through the world and not have any sort of idea of what's happening with this situation, but then offer an opinion yeah. that is completely uneducated right. and completely wrong and say that she hasn't watched the news in a couple of days <laughs> as if Kamala Harris could be black on Monday or white on Monday or Indian on Monday and then black on Thursday or Friday. It's weird. Julian, go. Well, I hate to... Quote Laura Ingram, who told some brothers to shut up and dribble. But I would tell Janet Jackson, shut up and sing, girl. And again, listen, if you don't know, just say you don't know and keep it moving, I'm a Congo. But to also make this comment, get all this blow black, blowback, and then you ain't sat here. And, and, and so your, your manager issues an apology, then y'all walk the apology back. So y'all want the lie to still sit out there. That's dumb. And all y'all other people, I see some of y'all fools talking about FBA and all that, and talking about, oh, Janice the icon, Roland Martin, you shilling. All y'all can kiss my entire ass. Not enough lips in the world that can cover that big buffalo butt of yours. But now you see though, that first brother, he was, he was keeping it real. He was basically letting everybody know that when you are a black person who 
is an independent thinker or you differ from the mainstream or you ain't down with all the race baiting or you call it like you see it a little too blunt, too honest, or you're not supporting their approved candidate, then all of a sudden they don't care how famous you are. They don't care how many fans you got. They will send out all of their minions to attack you and they will start with the gatekeepers. You know, look at all these folks, D.L. Hughley and all of them. Now, they will go out there and disrespect Janet, who have been on the scene way longer than some dang on Kamala Harris. Nobody was thinking about her. Back then, she was just chilling in the cut with Willie and all of them and Montel. They was all loving Janet. But now, all of a sudden, Janet is being disrespected because she disrespected uh, one of the Democrats. So they will cast their lot with the Democrats more than they would cast it with really black people. That's who they're really loyal to. And so now you got uh, Roland Martin coming out and trying to attack her while he got people on the show talking about she should just shut up and sing all of a sudden. But if she would have came out and endorsed Kamala, she would have been an angel. She would have been such a brave woman, all of that. But let's see if we can check out why Janet might not be so quick to endorse Kamala or support the narrative that she'll be the first black female president because that's the title they want to give her. See, it wouldn't be an issue if they wouldn't be focused on that and wanting to be able to claim the fact that we elected the first black female. Well, if y'all weren't mentioning that, we wouldn't even be focused on this. So let's see, because I got a good feeling Janet and her family might not fall for all of the Trump such a racist and this and this and that stuff because of a little history with Trump. Check this out, y'all. That could mean life in prison. And cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident, and that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Jackson gave a wave when he was released after booking. He's scheduled for arraignment in January. Michael's been a longtime resident of Trump Tower, and last night the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King by going after the accuser's mother. She's had plenty of experience at going after people, and she goes after them viciously and violently, and I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done, and I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when an indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. He's t it's tough, it's tough to win, but I have a feeling he's gonna win, Larry. The Interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints, and Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids, and at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago, and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester, and I am certain of that. He loved children. He'd play with my son Eric and my son Donald, and he'd just play with them forever. He loved children, but he was not a child molester. And, you know, that whole final saga of Neverland and the police and what they did was, I think, a very, very, a very, very bad part of Michael's life. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't understand because I thought Trump hated all black people. I thought he wanted them all to get the chair. He should have been out there writing uh, op-eds and stuff talking about Michael needs to go to jail forever. Uh, they need to bring back the electric chair for him and all that, but he didn't. And he also defended and supported Mike Tyson as well when everybody was saying this dude was a you know what is, uh, just like they were attacking Michael and Donald Trump was in his in his corner. So maybe that might be why Randy and some of the Jacksons are so quick to fall for the old lie that all of a sudden now Donald Trump is a white nationalist racist and stuff and Kamala is no longer just Indian and Jamaican, she's black. So what do they do? They send out another race painter like this big face apple head chick right here. Jackson's comments generated outrage online until a credited producer on her upcoming documentary walked it back before that person was seemingly fired, leaving it unclear whether Ms. Jackson still believes that Kamala Harris isn't black and really is willing to tell her billions of fans that there's no difference between Harris and Trump. It's a weird sequence of events, but Jackson is not alone. There's a host of celebrities who have made bizarre comments in actual support of Trump, who has long depended on endorsements from celebrities and manoverse influencers, mostly because reputable experts and political figures have largely abandoned him. Her fan base is massively black women. Um, black women all around the world are her core base. And if she is this subject to misinformation and disinformation, 
I feel like she actually does have the power to spread that disinformation and misinformation. And that winds up disempowering black yep. voters, black women voters exactly. in particular. Yeah. What do you make of it? Well, look, we know that disinformation and misinformation spreads rampant in black communities. So now all of a sudden Janet Jackson is spreading dis and misinformation. You see how they weaponize this, come up with these fake postmodern terms to control the population, control speech, can demonize people by just saying, you know what, you're out there spreading uh, dis and misinformation. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. You know, how about you prove it? She can't have an opinion. So all of a sudden now, it's dis and misinformation. The real danger is using these definitions of dis and misinformation to control people's speech and their thoughts. And they don't care who they have to use it on, even Janet Jackson. But I'm with you, girl. Control. Yeah, I'm with her. But then we end with Buffalo Butt himself. Now, here he is talking about earlier, kiss my butt. Uh, but yet, I wonder why he ain't talking about that butt that popped up on his uh, screen during uh, one of his streams. How is it now, three days later, and you, Jan Jackson, still have an issue an apology for that stupid-ass comment you made? Now, let me be real clear, okay? I think Jan Jackson is a fantastic entertainer. Puts on a great show. But this was a dumb-ass comment. An acidine. And you got the reporter sitting there telling you it's not true, and you say nothing. So here you are, you haven't corrected it, so what you're telling us is you're perfectly fine with the lie being out there. So you said nothing, Randy has said nothing, and that's just dumb. First of all, how many biracial people are in the Jackson family? How many of her brothers have married non-black people? And you literally are questioning, oh, I heard her dad was white. What the hell are you reading, Janet? And who you hear it from? Not only that, this woman was the Attorney General of California when you lived there. Did you walk past a TV set? I am so through with a lot of these black entertainers really being stuck on stupid with some of the comments that they're making. It's just dumb. And, and then it's, oh, oh, then this, oh, so it's gonna cause, uh, this is gonna, uh, you know, I don't, first of all, Here's probably the most true. I, honestly, I don't want to answer that because I really truthfully don't know. But why your ass talking about it? Why didn't you give The Guardian the same answer you gave me on the Tom Jordan Morning Show Fantastic Voyage Cruise five years ago? Then folks wouldn't be lighting your ass up. Memo to all entertainers, especially black ones. If you don't know shit about politics, shut up. Please. Because you look like a damn fool. No, a fool is as a fool does. That guy is a complete fool and a tool. He is one of the biggest tools for white liberals. Cause see behind him, uh, behind a lot of these so-called soul brothers and sisters are white liberals. And they use these dummies for their bidding. Make him go out there and attack other black folks and call her a fool. I mean, do you have Janet's money? I mean, uh, I'm wondering, did, is Janet not a, a smart person? She's dumb now, all of a sudden, just because she sees Kamala Harris, like a whole bunch of other folks do. But you're so committed to the left. You're so committed to the Democrat Party that you will immediately try to defend Kamala Harris by throwing out she went to a black school, her dad's Jamaican, her mom's from India, she's half black and all this stuff. And do you know what? You got to accept this. And if you don't bend the knee, because see, we're the overseers, we're the gatekeepers. Yeah, up top, when you get up to the top of that chain who promotes these type of people who tolerates these folks right here, they're white liberals. And they send folks out just like him and others to go out there and attack folks that get off that plantation or think freely. And that's what he's doing. He's allowing himself to be used, okay? He's a tool that is being used. That's what he is. And yet he got the nerve to be calling Janet Jackson a fool. Man, are you kidding me? I love Janet. And if she holds the line and don't bend the knee, then I'm with her. That's the, yeah, I'll be with somebody like that. Yeah, I will support somebody like that, but I sure ain't with no chameleon Kamala Harris. Don't know what you're getting. Yeah, she's a chameleon. And that is why we're questioning, are you black or white or Indian or Asian or whatever? That's why we're questioning it. Now, God bless y'all. God bless America. We'll see y'all next time in Kevin's Corner. Take care.